Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Regina coming to you with a wonderful group of people today. We are with Realty Success Hub, and I've got Aaron Brown here. We'll get you started today. Go ahead and introduce yourself if you would. Realty Success Hub here, your resource for all things real estate. We're super excited to have some really fun guests on today. We have Matt with Yardsworth. I would like to introduce him right quick. And then we've got Brooke out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Angela from Savvy Cleaner. Matt, could you say hi to us right quick? Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Lucido. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Yardsworth, a California-based real estate finance company. It's good to be here. We're so excited to have you. So I'm in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and we are experiencing lower inventories and an affordable housing crisis. And we're seeing some, I'd say, more traditional approaches to trying to correct that. It sounds like Yardsworth is taking a very non-traditional, very creative approach to addressing some of these really serious issues. Yeah, no question about it. And this is not a unique to California problem, right? California certainly has a housing crisis that's palpable, but many other states and cities around our country, you know, there's a dearth of housing. How do we make housing more accessible, further expandable as an asset class, more financeable? These are all questions that I think about. And thankfully, at least in California, the state government is also thinking about. In California in particular, they passed a new law. It's called SB9. And it literally allows a homeowner to split their single family lot into two lots and it allows them to sell either or typically they're selling the backyard piece, right? And, and that's where we come in. We expect that this won't be unique to California for very long. Other cities and states are, are looking at this law and understanding that it is a way to do infill development, build new housing where previously maybe you couldn't due to restrictive zoning or other things that were, you know, were preventative. But yeah, we're really excited to be at sort of the forefront of doing this in California, and hopefully we can lead the charge along with you wonderful people as it expands throughout the country. Let's say, for example, that I decide to sell my backyard. Mm -hmm. What happens to the land once I sell it? What we do at Yardsworth is, is we buy backyards, but we do that in order to build new permanent housing, right? Anyone can go to our website, yardsworth.com, and find out what their yard's worth. We provide a value much like what Zillow does with their Zestimate. But instead of looking at the whole property, obviously we're looking at only sort of the saleable piece of the backyard where new housing can get built. And so to your question, Angela, what actually happens is we usher our homeowner partners, our customers through a lot split application process with the city that they live in. And the city will actually draw new lot lines and new maps will get recorded. A new address will be assigned to the rear parcel. And then once there's a new address, it's a separate title, separate deed. We then are able to legally, of course, buy it because we can't buy it before it exists. And then we work with the builder to build a new small home or a duplex. We're allowed to build up to two units on the new parcels that are created. So either a home or a duplex, two units. I'm so interested in the size mm -hmm. of the backyard that's required and the easements. Could we talk about that for just a minute? Yeah, sure. I think a little known fact is that we're not talking about acre or half acre size lots here. We're talking about as small as probably 5,000 square foot lots to eight, nine, 10,000 square foot lots. Smaller than 5,000 becomes a bit tricky because usually homes aren't squeezed up to the front yard setback or the front of the lot, right? They're usually sort of somewhere in the middle or in the front third. What we need to do, what we do is actually only about 1,500 square feet. So call it 30 feet by a 50 foot wide lot. So we tell our homeowner partners, what really is going to happen, this is to your question earlier, Angela, is your back fence is going to come in about 30 feet. We also do have to create a, an access path to the front. It's required by law that, that obviously people uh, are, are able to, to access the rear lot. If we're able to do that without an easement, great, Aaron. But if there's no space on one of the sides of the house, and let's say the driveway is on the other side, we do then incorporate an easement that is for access for the rear residents and for parking for the existing homeowner. So what we try to really do is maintain the status quo as much as possible for the homeowner, right? We're already interrupting their lives and their properties a lot. Anyone that moves into a home or a duplex in a backyard that's a yard's worth property will park on the street. And of course, they'll walk back to the rear part of the uh, parcel. All right, guys. Well, it has been a pleasure having all of you on. We look forward to catching up again soon. Matt, you're always welcome back. Keep us updated. For sure. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.